Okay, the video I made yesterday had some problems and I had forgotten to turn on voice on my microphone here, so it was pretty much 20 minutes of my life wasted. Here is the bass intro screen you get. We're going to go to solo mode for the moment. And you're presented with your planet as everything loads and populates. These are the different types of uh, regions you can play on. Mountains, valleys, canyons, green, coast, blah, 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 you can read. Each one has its own benefits and problems. Mountains are pretty decent for holidays, but are full of water. They're really hard because there's a lot of hard slopes and places where it's hard to build and stuff. Valleys are very fertile, usually a mix between some of the others in the valleys. There's multiple things you can get, valleys and all of that good stuff. This is where my city is here in the valley. Usually you get fertile and a bit of water. Canyons usually are complete oil fields, as you can see oil, and you get some good holidays, kind of like a Vegas type stuff. They're difficult, but not too bad. The plains are pretty much nothing but fertile. You sometimes get a mix of the others, and that's what's good about it. You never really know what you're going to find in each area. Like, the last one had oil, and this one doesn't. Coasts are very good for holidays, and you can see that it's a mix of all of it, so there's a lot of stuff you can do here. And this is the limited edition stuff I got, which is some great areas, extra areas. So we'll go back to Green Plains and go to my city, Oops, Valley, sorry. But each one's a little different. Each one has its own difficulty and benefits and all of that. This is the information on my city. I'm very rich right now. I have a great cash flow, decent amount of people. And these are the tokens that I have. The tokens are essentially what you're producing, what you're earning, and what you need to earn. As you can see, I need to earn, get some offices, and I need some better power. Those tokens you can either build or you can buy. And the blue ones are what I have in excess. So I have a lot of cash right now, which is good. Gives me some playing room. And I've got one extra food and one industry. So we'll load it up. And the trading system I, I really, really am happy with. There's, It's not quite as good as the online version, but considering it's single and you're offline playing against a computer... It's not too bad. <clears throat> okay. Here's my city. We're going to zoom out for a moment. Go all the way up to planet view. And you can see... Ooh, I'm using the wrong key there, sorry. This is my city. It's pretty small. This is one I was screwing around with just to uh, get a better idea for some of the infrastructure and stuff when uh, online mode was being updated. The interface is very, very similar to SimCity except I find it more easy, more intuitive, flows better. The information about what's good and bad is easier to find. Unqualified workers are pretty happy, 83%. You click it and it expands the options. They're all happy. Jobs are not a problem. What's bringing their satisfaction down is the fact that 25% of the people are not able to find a home because I don't have any housing available right now. So that's what I need to work on. My qualified workers, I don't have enough jobs for them right now, so they're pretty pissed off. And I don't have any of the other two built. Factories, I have 100% satisfaction. Offices, 94. No construction areas, so they're brought down a bit because I do have demand. You saw that in the other chart. I need offices. I don't have any hotels. And commerce is, again, needing some construction areas for retail. So paying attention to these is absolutely huge. In SimCity, you could zone areas for all sorts of stuff, and it would just sit there and do nothing until somebody needed it. In this, if you zone useless stuff, they'll start getting mad because you're bringing down the whole area. Or people will try to move in and build, they'll try to start a business, but because there's no demand, it will fail. You'll lose money, your citizens will get pissed off, and that part of the industry will fail. So you have to pay attention to what people need, want, and desire. That's my avatar, it looks really retarded, but I didn't spend a lot of time on it environmental quality this fluctuates right now it's gone down a bit because I've built some more factories and so it's tanked a tiny bit but if you click it it expands and shows you all the different things that's going on right now in your city and information passengers holidays all this stuff information you can get transportation population statistics I don't usually use that one too much because if that zero is going up they're coming in if it's down they're not so We've got 17,000 citizens right now. That's not too bad. With budget, this is where you can get into some of the deeper stuff that SimCity used to have. It's nowhere near as intuitive, but 
like taxes. Instead of being able to tax every individual class and having pages of this stuff, you've just got a blanket one for income and corporate taxes. I have found the default on these is pretty good. These guys aren't too happy with my taxes. They'd like me to lower it, but honestly, I don't care because they're at a. These guys are 83% satisfied, so I'm not going to mess with that. It goes over your expenses, the most profitable build buildings that you have, and you can actually go to it, which is awesome. I like that. The most expensive things in your city, so if you're losing a lot of money, you can find out what's costing you the most money and tweak it, modify it. Loans. Um, I haven't had to take out a loan yet. I've found that if you manage your city carefully and smartly, you don't need that at all. At least in the easy one. This is an easy section, so in the harder ones, I might need that. Over here are your main options. You can go over your resources, which I love having resources. I don't have any oil, but I do have groundwater here, which for some reason isn't showing up. Oh, because I've paused the game. Aha, uh -huh, there we go. Groundwater. So all this highlighted area is where groundwater is located, and I can move it. There's a circle cut out here because I have a water <laughs> here. And that gives me enough water to satisfy my farmlands and my citizens. I don't have enough right now to sell off, but as you can see, <laughs> the other area is fertile. You can only build farms on fertile ground, so I couldn't build a farm over here if I wanted to. In SimCity, you could build a farmland wherever the hell you wanted to, even in the middle of your industrial area. And I actually had someone move in. They yelled at me all the time they were there because they were pissed off at the industrial complex, but they chose to move in. Here, you cannot build there. The other thing to pay attention to with that is businesses will actually care about what's around them. Like, um, this company works better due to the president, presence of passenger services. So because I have good infrastructure right next to it, it's able to do very good. It can sell its goods, people can get there, and that helps a lot. Industry, you need to set it aside because if you look here, the uh, environment is pretty crappy. There's a lot of air pollution. So if this air pollution touches part of my city, the people that live there, their satisfaction levels will start going down. If you do it bad enough, they will actually move out, and that area will become a dead zone to you until you clean it up or rezone it as something else. So you got to pay attention to what's going on, especially when your cities get big or you have specifics that you need to build. Economy, I don't look at this one too much other than traffic. Similar to SimCity, it just highlights the areas that are bad. I do like being able to see freight. You can see what's pretty used there. You can do that in SimCity as well, but it, freight was kind of an interesting thing to do. Now, the security system here is based on infrastructure. In SimCity, you would just get a ring, and anything in that ring was saved. With this, it's all on your infrastructure. It will lead up to a distance, but if you, they have to travel too far, they won't be able to get there. So these are some hot spots right here where they're having a bit of crime problems. This is my one station here, and all the yellow is areas that it can easily get to. So you can see down here in the farmland, it falls off because the infrastructure is too slow. But they're coming down here on the main roads. They're able to cover almost my entire city. Since this is farmland, I don't need to waste money on extra resources. I don't have enough citizens for fire rescue yet. Same thing for education. I built it right next door, so it reaches the same amount of area. So my entire city area is okay. In SimCity, it would only cover, say, this portion.